Well, look, let's talk to Simon Calder. He's travel correspondent at The Independent and joins us once again. Good morning to you, Simon. Uh, good morning, Julia. Yep, um, you've got that just about right. And people are entitled to their money back if they have lost cash as a result of this in terms of paying for their own hotels. The airlines are supposed to pay for the hotels um, themselves and then claim it back. On top of that, um, you're able, able to claim for meals. And if you are um, making your own way home, particularly I've been hearing from a lot of people in places like uh, southern France and uh, Spain and Portugal coming back over land, then you send the airline the bills. So you get recompense, but that is not the same thing as getting compensation. The cash compensation amounts that um, we've talked about so much only apply if it's the airline's fault. It manifestly isn't yeah. in this case. The airlines anyway are losing about, I calculate, £80 million as a result of this, and they're not going to be in the mood for handing out any more than they have to. We are, exactly, and I don't know why airlines should. I mean, they, they've had to pay out an awful lot over the last year, few years as it is. Um, the thing is, you say, you say they're not entitled to compensation. So you've lost work, you've lost a, you might have lost your, you know, a time on holiday and, and all of that. But, we, 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 as you say, that people are entitled to be putting up in a hotel they are entitled to food and drink you know, your basic supplies you're not allowed to go and stay at the ritz but you know you could be put up in the local you know bog standard three-star hotel which is more than enough for most people the trouble is when there isn't a hotel and when you can't get to a hotel um and you've got no information you know, your phone charges run out you know you've been sitting at an airport sleeping on the floor for two nights bearing in mind this happened on monday we're now on wednesday people are still at the airports many of them just frankly hoping they can get on a flight if they're there but many of them simply being told there are no hotel rooms other countries flights are still functioning they didn't have a stop their hotel rooms have been and gone they're booked up there aren't any hotel rooms we are still in the peak season what what rights do you have then well, that is um, and a really good question, Julia. Um, that is the really serious problem that I think we need to tackle before the next meltdown, whatever it is. It's absolutely clear that the airlines are supposed to have hotels ready for people to um, uh, stay in. Unfortunately, that is for yeah, the odd plane going technical as opposed to a complete closure of airspace. Um, and actually, things I'm hearing on the ground are getting a little bit easier because, well, frankly, there aren't that many British holidaymakers arriving to take up rooms. Mm. So there is a little bit of space becoming available. Some good news today in terms of EasyJet putting on rescue flights um, to a number of uh, destinations to bring back people from areas where there's an awful lot of people waiting and EasyJet's also putting on some bigger planes to bring but hold extra, on a minute but, but again I mean that's great and again they, you know it's not their fault and they're the ones who were left you know out of pocket having to deal with all this so they, they'll probably be suing Nats as a result but I see what their their uh, com their compensation is that they get yeah. but but you know, the, this this issue happened on Monday it's now Wednesday they could have thought of that on Monday well, yes, absolutely. There's, there will be an awful lot of um, in, in, inquests into uh, what went wrong, what could have been done better, um, starting, of course, from, um, well, what exactly happened with that um, computer system completely to close airspace all the way through to um, how did the airlines react and what could they do better next? Uh, and I'm really sorry, while most airlines are now they pressed the reset button and they got back to um, kind of normal operations ahead of a very, very busy weekend. British Airways cancelled another 30 flights today, um, most of them actually uh, linking um, London Heathrow with uh, Scottish airports. Mm. So bad luck if you're... But uh, oh, this is the thing I don't understand. We, we, this problem is, it emerged on Bank Holiday Monday late morning. It was resolved, we're told, by mid-afternoon. Why on earth? They, okay, there was a backlog on the day. Okay, and you cancel a bunch of flights sort of to catch up. So instead of every flight being delayed for the next week, you just right, we'll just cancel a bunch of those, and then and then we kind of start again from scratch the next day. Why are they still cancelling flights two days on? Uh, well, simply because um, the aircraft pilots, cabin crew are still in the wrong in the places. Wrong. Um, oh. uh, now, uh, some people might say, "Hang on, British Airways, you've actually been cancelling quite a few flights." 
before this happened <laughs> um, you know, on a daily basis. So maybe uh, this is a useful bit of cover. Who knows? Um, but You're uh, so Bruce cynical, Waiter. Simon. You're so cynical. Well, let, let me go back to this IT meltdown, though. Um, th th we've, we've been told by the National Air Traffic Service that you know they're not really anything out, but we have been told that they basically are. They're saying it wasn't a hack. Pfft, I've got some question marks about that. I think invariably when you know, banks go down, computers go down generally, and when it's on a big scale, that actually often hackers are involved and we're just not told about it. But a single rogue flight plan filed by a French airline, they believe basically the computer couldn't, you know, computer said no, couldn't understand it, and therefore they had to go to manual input. Sorry, that, I mean, I'm no IT expert, as my IT expert husband can tell me, but that doesn't fly with me at all. Well, I've spoken at length to Martin Rolf, the chief executive of Nats, and he says that this was effectively a fail-safe there was a possibility, Julia, that this um, rogue flight plan, which I dare say was um, filed by some hapless work experience person who inadvertently shut down the whole of UK airspace, um, but uh, they, it came in, the uh, system looked at it and thought, oh, don't like the look of... Uh, oh, need any Simon, misinformation you... to controllers. Oh, so you um, went I, down I for a second, but you're back. Carry on. Ah, OK, yeah, well, I need to check my flight plan, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to uh, uh, feed any misinformation to controllers, so we are going to do what we always do, which is fail safe. So we'll close down the system, we'll get the uh, uh, controllers manually to handle the flights which are in the air, and then we'll see what the um, scale of the uh, problem is. And, of course, the scale when we came back was very large indeed. Yeah. I counted up to midnight last night, and we had round of about um, uh, 2,000 cancellations and about 300,000 people uh, whose flights were cancelled over the previous 48 hours. Yeah, indeed. Absolute, absolute chaos. I have to say, we, we've told, you know, unless you hear from the airline, your flight is going, so we've told you know, to keep on going. But again, a lot of people say, well, they only find out their flight's cancelled when they get to the airport, when they could have uh, been, you know, made alternative arrangements, but a lot of people still stranded. If you or a family member are stranded, do get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Simon called it always good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Travel correspondent at The Independent. Apologies for the quality of that line.